Professor Stanley Ellis has studied varieties of English all his life. He still finds Elizabethan speech patterns in the English West Country. When people reproduce Shakespeare's pronunciation nowadays, so far as they know, pronunciations of words like time and life were in the 16th century something like time and life. And you've got these lovely vowel sounds followed by an R, which is probably a retention of the old uh, Anglo-Saxon R, the R that was still used after vowels in, in spelling and in pronunciation in Shakespeare's time. And of course other things that Shakespeare used as well are still current down in the southwest. I-Z, I-Z, uh, the Varma, that use of the voiced Z instead of S and V instead of F. These are the sort of things that perhaps a, a modern actor will use when he wants to indicate that he's using a country accent. And these are the sort of things too that, uh, that Shakespeare used. It's sometimes claimed that you have to go to remote parts of America to hear Elizabethan English. In fact, the counties of the West Country still preserve strong echoes of Elizabethan talk. In Devon, Dorset, Somerset, Gloucestershire, and the other counties of the region, there are places like Kingham, whose linguistic roots lie deep in the 16th century. Tom Eaton has worked these Cotswold uplands for 50 years. His speech has the elongated vowels and rolled R that we've just heard about. Listen to how he pronounces farm, five, and life. A lot of people think that farming's all pleasure, you know, but people come for holidays, they say, oh, lovely life, farm life, and it's like this, but when you're at it every day, it's not so good, I must say, all weathers. <laughs> well, we reckon to finish about five in the winter and the dark nights, of course. Uh, start about six in the morning, finish about five, and through the winter time. Seven days a week, nearly all the time, of course, but uh, I suppose you get used to it, you're bred and born to it, and you just uh, take it as it comes, I suppose. Time and again, Shakespeare's poetry reminds us of his country boyhood. There's the old story of Hamlet saying there's a divinity that shapes our ends, rough hew them how we will, and of a person not so many years ago meeting an old hedge cutter in the lane with his assistant and asking him what he was doing. And uh, the reply was, he rough hews them and I shape their ends. I believe Shakespeare had a Warwickshire accent and uh, probably held on to it for all his life. People were not ashamed of their accents, they kept them and there was that kind of diversity um, and, and the idea of standard speech was not a, not accepted at all in that time. And uh, he seems, by everything we know about him, to have remained very proudly a Warwickshire man. I think if you love the plays and you read the plays and you see the plays and you walk around Warwickshire, it does come together. There's nowhere closer to Shakespeare than, than Warwickshire, the Warwickshire countryside and the Warwickshire villages. The closest we can come to the sound of Shakespeare's own speech is in the little villages around Stratford itself. The cider drinkers of Elmley Castle in neighbouring Worcestershire still speak English in a way that Shakespeare himself would recognise. To Tom. Oh, what a shame. Well, I, I used to take uh, cider our own maid boy to school when I was five years of age, so that's uh, 54 years ago, that is. I was at five, five this morning, I hope, and three pints of beer tonight and a pint of cider with me supper. I then to bed. And I don't catch a cold. Remember that, Tom? One less on the door. No, we're getting on the house. No. 
He used to go up to the old farmhouse, uh, Robertses, the farmers, and uh, get a jug of quart jug of cider, and anybody in the village could all have as much cider uh, as long as it lasted, like, you know, through the year, like. And, uh, and you'd take a quart jug up and bring a quart jug of cider back and warm it up in the saucepan, and that's all we had then. And about a sore throat, it was brimstone and treacle. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you didn't behave yourself, I could smack the ass and upstairs straight to bed. <laughs> whether you wanted to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you wanted to do whether you didn't. <laughs> Bear in mind that soda drinking will kill you. It definitely will. It killed my father, soda drinking did. It took 84 years to do it, though. What's it like? Very good. As we'll see, it was the speech of people like these that went with the Elizabethan seafarers to America. This golden age also saw a publication that has probably had an even greater influence than Shakespeare's first folio on the language of ordinary people. The translation of the Bible into the English of the authorized version. <laughs> Here at last was the word of God, expressed in terms that everyone could understand. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Physician, heal thyself. For many are called, but few are chosen. All they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Where Shakespeare drew on his teeming vocabulary of 34,000 words, the new translation achieved the majestic effects of its prose with barely 8,000. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. It's an interesting reflection on the state of the language, that the poetry of the authorized version came not from a single writer, but from a committee, some of whom worked here at the University of Cambridge. One of the translators was a certain John Boys, a fellow of St. John's College here in Cambridge. A brilliant scholar, he and five colleagues spent most of the year, 1610, refining and revising the final draft. Their brief 